Hello everybody, welcome back to season two of the Ice Test with me, Ringo FM. Um, season two, Electric Boogaloo. Um, hopefully you like the new intro, uh, I am trying to work on a bit of editing. I'm trying, I really am trying. Uh, got a bit of editing on the go, got a nice new overlay, matches the colours of the club. I thought that's how we're going to do it. Uh, it says Ringo FM, it doesn't say Ringo at 71 Gaming anymore. Doesn't have, doesn't have the social media handles. Um, but yeah, we're trying, we're really trying, we're, we're pushing ahead. I just wanted to get that first season done and dusted. Uh, and I'll show you, you can probably see at the top there, we actually ended up finishing 14th in La Liga. Um, we were comfortably away from relegation in the end. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, Alaves, Las Palmas and Cadiz. Um, we, we, we weren't anywhere near being in danger, but we weren't necessarily safe. I think that's the best way of putting it. Uh, and we did say in, in yesterday's video what we were going to start looking at was um, sorting out the sorting out the squad, sorting out the youth players, uh, a couple of transfers, obviously, um, looking at what we want and how and how we're working things. And and I think we we're, we're there, we're nearly there. And um, there's a couple of transfers sort of going in north at the minute, and I'll show you what they are now. So we will start on the transfers out. Uh, Raul de Tomas was sort of, uh, was the, the last of the ones from January. But if we look down from here, uh, we have now lost Pate Cis. He has gone back to France to play for Saint Etienne. Uh, Nine hundred thousand, not not great. Um, but he wanted out. He was on pretty high wages. We needed him gone. Um, EC uh, Palathon has gone to Leeds. Um, they reckon he's worth about 30 mil. He's definitely not. It's it's purely reputation and tax, you know, the, the, the English League tax and all that nonsense that happens on FM. Uh, but he's going to lead 5 million up front, no sort of add-ons or anything like that. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the next one gone, Luke Wolfenden, actually went for 1.5 mil, so we made a pretty significant loss on him, um, considering that we will still be paying over the course of the season. I really, really liked him. We did get Van Hecke in. Um, Van Heck, Van Hecke, however you want to say it, uh, is ultimately just a better defender. I wanted to keep Reese Oxford around. Again, he was on pretty high wages. He wanted to go back. Um, the cons, you know, doesn't enjoy big matches. And it did show. He did play in a couple of matches where he just capitulated. So he spent a lot of time on the bench. Uh, Ivan Baliu, we mentioned he wanted to go out as well. Uh, so he is now gone. Uh, Adrian Hernandez went from 94k to Valladolid. And then Unai Lopez, who I think played didn't play that much for me that that was over the course of like the three seasons he played more for uh, the, the previous regime uh, and then that leads us on to um, the June signings a lot of free signings as you'll see uh, Baldini coming in for 1.4 million as you know but um, financial wise we're not great so we're relying a lot on loan deals and free transfers and having to get people out the door so we got all these out the door in favour of these coming in a couple of release players in there. Kika Casilla, who come in on 35 grand a week, has been replaced with Joe Hart, 37-year-old Joe Hart. Um, I like him. Jump and reach, acceleration, anticipation. But the fact that he, he's such a good leader, he's got such a good personality, he's just a legend of the game. He, he He's really high up on the hierarchy straight away. I thought him coming in um, on 14 grand a week, purely as a backup goalkeeper it makes total sense it makes total sense to me so he was the first in next in was obviously Mohamed Baldini who is probably going to play a bigger part this season than he ended up doing last season and um, we cannot get Adam either back I have tried they want to play him in the first team it makes sense he's a good player so Baldini's probably going to be playing a lot more than we anticipated this season in rotation with uh, we're going to keep one of the two young strikers that we've got I'm not sure who yet, but hopefully we can come to a, an informed decision. Uh, obviously, Damari Gray coming in on a free. I'm quite happy with that transfer. Inverted winger can play behind the striker, can play up front, can play out of the wing. Um, he's quick. He, he's got decent anticipation. Um, whether the scouts actually, the, the coaches rate him all that much, is you know remains to be seen. They don't think he can... He can improve an awful lot, but the fact that he is very quick and we're playing counter attack on football is, is going to help us in the long run. And then the two, a couple of big pickups to be fair, I'd say. Uh, Jan Paul Van Heck, you can see straight away just looking at the attributes, he's better than, than Luke Wolfenden. Um, again, if you take star ratings into account, which we're trying not to too much, 
Um, he is the best centre back at the club. He will probably be the starter most weeks alongside Reese Oxford. And we also brought in uh, Goncalo Estevez. He's going to be the starting right back, rotating with Alan Nyon. Uh, next up, we brought in England under 21's um, captain in Taylor Harbour Bellis on a free transfer from Man City. Very happy with that. He can cover it right back. Amazing personality. Uh, six foot two, good jump and reach, good acceleration, good anticipation. Technically, very, very good. Um, central defender or a ball playing defender. I like him. The coaches quite like him. Um, their problem is he's a bit one footed and then obviously training and whatnot. Um, the training doesn't really matter. It's the, literally the 2nd of July. They're not even back for pre-season just yet. They're all still on their holiday or on international duty. I just think that is um, a pickup that we probably shouldn't have been able to make, but we have. Um, so I'm very, very pleased to have Taylor in through the door. Next up then is Risto Radunovic, the Montenegrin. Um, 32 years of age, covers at left back. Um we we really struggled with the left back options. Espino was very very good, but obviously we brought in two different left backs throughout the season. Um, Radunovic is now the third one in in a season and a half essentially. But he's got a lot of um, he's got a lot of attributes I quite like. Again, he's a good leader. We needed a few leaders in there. I think mentality is going to get us further than anything else. Um, he, he, you know, he, he works quite hard. He's got very good position and good leadership, good off the ball, very good bravery. Um, again, a decent player. He won't play an awful lot. Um, he, he's happy coming in as an impact sub. He expects just to be given opportunities off the bench. That's fine. That's all we're going to use him for. And then he was followed in through the door by Kevin and Dorham, who come in on a free transfer from Mets, I believe. Uh, yes, he did. Former Monaco player. 28 years of age now um, he is going to be basically that that starter in the whole midfield role we obviously lost uh, you know you can see they're saying Reese Oxford Mara and Jota the three whole midfielders um, and Dorham's going to play I I'm worried about him being fairly susceptible to injury so what we're actually going to do in this episode we're going to look at the medical reports because I actually don't think a lot of people do that on FM you don't really see people especially content creators you don't see it um, obviously we, lo we lost Paul Akoko we did have an agreed £2.2 .2 million and um, clause to bring him in. We can't really afford that. And I wanted to prioritise the defenders over the midfield. If we can't play a whole midfielder, we'll play an attacking midfielder. We do have players who can play in the attacking midfield strata. Um, Kevin and Dorham, he makes total sense for me to come in. He's definitely going to be the starter and he's going to be rotating with Mara. Very similar, but again, wins the ball. His, you know, six foot tall jump and reaches decent, acceleration is decent. Great aggression, great bravery, great composure, good anticipation, great determination. His teamwork and work rate are fantastic. Stamina is there. He can mark, he can pass, he can tackle. He's a good player. I think he's a good player to bring in. It's just the end. Um, it's. It's just the, the medical side of it. We need to really try and manage him through games, I think. And then finally, we did get John Pacheco, who was highlighted in the last video. Uh, six foot tall, not amazing in the air. Uh, he, his jumping route isn't great. However, his anticipation, composure, concentration, his passing, um, he could technically be retrained to play in that ball with a midfielder or, or hold midfield role. His passing is fantastic. Um, positioning. I, I don't think he's going to need to head the ball a lot. We do play a low block nine times out of ten and a low defensive line. It means he probably doesn't need to head the ball away all that often. But he is fantastic on the ball. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have brought him in, to be completely honest with you. If his position is that good and he's playing his cover, which it looks like he will, his pace is more than enough to get him back there. Um, I'm very, very happy with that. Um, two million up front maybe overpaid for him slightly he has got room to grow don't forget he is only 23 so yeah we're happy we've got some reinforcements in but there's definitely some areas of the squad that need improving and you can see that basically looking at, at the squad planner and um, this is what Rui Agas thinks the current season looks like in terms of depth uh, Raul de Tomas is basically the number one he he will be going I don't like him he's um who's he got a bit by there was a few clubs but there was a couple yeah Fiorentina we're hoping for Fenerbahce is like the three mil up front and then add-ons in it so it will be Sergio Camelo so we're going to get to Thomas out of there um, 
Alvaro Garcia looks like he's going to be the starting left winger. If we do play inside, we do have Demario Gray. Demario Gray can also play on the right-hand side. Um, I think there we're fine. We've got a lot of cover there. Central midfield strata, that's where we need to look at improving today. Uh, obviously, we do have Jota, who thankfully we have signed to a new deal. He did want silly wages which annoyed me a little bit. Um, however, giving him silly wages allowed me to give him a £20 million release clause. I don't think anybody's going to meet that, but I think because it was so low and he was performing really well, I mean, a 7.09 across, what, 17 games? Three goals, six assists. Um, very consistent performer. I think some of us eventually come in for him. We didn't want to lose him. We've still got six years worth of growth in him, basically. Um, yeah, we're, we're ca happy to have tied him down, but you can see there's not a lot there. There's not an awful lot in the centre midfield. Uh, Trejo, 36 years of age. We did mention the fact his, his physicals were falling off a cliff. Technically still very, very good. He is the player I was thinking who could play in that attacking midfield strata if need be. But we do want to try and bring in... Um, I always wanted, actually. Do you know uh, We did want to try and bring an actual centre midfielder. We do have uh, Suleiman Mara, who, you know what? For what he was, he was a free transfer. He was on the first we brought in. 6.68, 6 6.7 is about the average, isn't it, for um, a central midfielder, or just, just anyone performing. I think he could come in and do a job, to be honest. Uh, we were playing central midfield attack with Kike. Um, I do like the fact he is consistent. We have found a lot of consistent players in this save. Um, they're saying he's, you know, his, his ability is not that good. You know, he's only a league, La Liga two player. I think he's not. I think the fact that he's played what? How many games has he played there? Twenty-two games over the course of thirty-seven game season, and he's averaged a six point seven. I think that's fine. I think that's absolutely fine. And. Um, we could eventually settle with that, but we are going to have a little look in the Youth Academy as well to see if there's anyone who can cover there. Obviously, Indorum's going to be the main player there. Espino left back, we did say, but we do have Risto Radunovic and Thibaut de Smet. Again, another player who the coaches are like, eh, he doesn't look great. Um, you know, he only really played five games off the bench. There was a few games he actually did perform okay, but we will probably look to move him on at some point. Um, I think we do now have uh, Radunovic there, so we're happy with that. Van Heck, Moomin, Lejeune will be gone, so we'll get him out of there. Um, so it's looking like Howard Bellis, Moomin. Again, I'm not, I'm not enamoured. We have listed them. There's not a lot of people that want him. I just don't think, you know, it's saying he's consistent. I don't think he is. I don't think he's all that good. Um, again, if we look at his, his overview for the season, a 6.6 .6 average rating. For attributes like that I just don't think he's got it in him you know I just don't think he, he, he's all that good so we are looking to move movement on uh, obviously we do now have Tyler Harwood Bellis in there too and Reese Oxford Reese Oxford who again he come in good money he was above average compared to everyone else again he's wanted he's wanted by Girona I don't want to lose him I think he's he's pretty much one of the bankers I, I think the rotation is going to be there between uh, Van Heck. Oxford, Harwood, Bellas. I think that that rotation is going to be there. Obviously, Moomin, we do kind of want four. If we do lose Moomin, we might keep Lejeune. I don't know. It depends who goes out the door first. Obviously, um, Don Goncalo Estevez is, is going to be the, the first choice right back. And then Danny Cardenas is, is going to be the number one again. Um, 6.74 average rating. I'm very happy with him. If we look at him compared to Joe Hart, and we look at their overview, Joe Hart's eccentricity, communication are better, his aerial is a lot better, but he's a lot taller, let's not forget. Um, you know, I, 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 I think they complement each other quite well. I think we're setting goalkeeper, we don't need to worry about it. If Cardenas does get injured, I think Joe Hart's got more than enough to step in there. So that brings us then on to... Um, Utilising what we mentioned when we brought Rodolfo Burrell into the club, if we can suggest a transfer target, you know, we're, we're talking about midfield centre. Is there anybody available on a free transfer who we might like? Um, Roman Zobnin is a brilliant player. He, he was at Monaco, wasn't he? Is it just me or does he really look like Granit Xhaka on that picture? I think that picture's wrong. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, Roman Zobnin uh, as a ball winning fielder on a free transfer, six foot tall, model professional. 
Ooh. Jumping reach is decent. Anticipation, great. Bravery, incredible. Determination, brilliant. Teamwork, work rate. He's won to buy a couple of clubs. I'm gonna offer him a couple a couple of weeks trial. Get him in, see what see what the coaches think about him as well. Um, but I, I like utilizing this because I am still using sort of the eyes test. We're not we're not using the um the the scouts really co co coaching reports are different because it's purely based on on, on what the coaches think and um, i don't like the look of oliver kemen and then there's michael full who who does he play for i've heard of this guy before he looks very 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 well rounded he played a season at verona last it looks like last year but was contracted to napoli and um, He's pretty much got everything we're looking for, hasn't he? Really good balance, really good jump and reach fitness. The problem is, is that Rodolfo Burrell has scouted this guy. So am I technically cheating by bringing him in and doing that? Again, another consistent performer. Looks like he enjoys big games. This attribute graph is, is superb. What would he want? He's slightly he wants 25 to 36 can we drop it down it was one between 22 and 32 instead of 25 and 36 Ooh. um i mean i don't need to compare him to mara he's better than mara and he's a more attacking threat we played central midfield attack he can play central midfield attack blackburn montpellier leon ham or oh, i think we go for him you know We've not got an awful lot left in the wage budget though. We're currently spending 485. We've got 504. If we brought him in, that'd pretty much put us level with the wage budget. Obviously, um, De Thomas and a few other players are going out actually. So, oh, I like him. Nigerian, Italy. Would he count towards the registration? Let's offer him a deal. I always try and go lowest squad player. Obviously, unless it is somebody who is coming in purely to be a, a backup option. Uh, do -do. Combined goals and assists. We'll, we'll bump this right up. Not getting unused. You're not getting an appearance fee. We'll give you, again, another big bonus there. Team of the year bonus. That's always a good one. Give them a good team of the year bonus. And... We'll give him we'll give him a big sell on fee. We'll try and give him a big sell on fee to see if he's happy with the wage. He's not happy with the wage. Now, I don't normally like putting appearance fees on, but uh full Rossinio, I think he is exactly what we want. We've got him on 21k. He does have a 10.5k appearance fee, so he is going to be getting <laughs> a lot of money over the course of the season. Um we have agreed the deal though, so that's good. Let's hope let's hope nobody else pulls the trigger on him. The other option we've got is utilizing the loan market. There's a couple of players here um, that Rodolfo believes would be interested in coming to the club and can do a job. Um, we are looking for a central midfielder also like a box to box. There is this guy here, Equatorial Guyan uh, Guyanan Guyanan? Guyanan. Um it's Jose Machin. He did play for Malaga as well. He is Spanish, so he does meet the registration requirement. Gets into the opposition area, shoots from distance. He's quite tall. Decent anticipation, if not just good. Um, can we get him? What What would they want wage-wise? They'd want us to cover all 13k and have an option to buy him further up. 27k monthly cost I think we go for it and we just say just on the off chance that Forresino doesn't come in um, we've got Petrovic here we don't need another ball winner so he, he's fine uh, and then we've got oh he's a big boy he's big and meaty Alessandro Delia from Cagliari 
lovely place by the way never get to go it's a lovely place um decent anticipation acceleration good jump and reach good physicals mentally is, is he's okay um he's nothing out of the ordinary i quite like him actually only wants to buy Salah Return and, and Verona. Hmm. See, with him, they're going to want more money up front and a mandatory fee of 1.3 million. I don't want to get burnt with that again unless it is like an outstanding target. So I don't think we're going to go for Delia. I think now then we need to look at the development centre. Um, you will see that I have basically listed absolutely everybody. Uh, apart from this guy because he's not long come back I've listed like the whole of the B team and it doesn't work unless they're in the league it doesn't work um, if we go on to their fixtures for 2022 I told them to arrange a friendly every single week and you'll look they literally did it between August 2022 and that is it that is all they did um, it, it doesn't work it doesn't work so we're going to get rid of all the B team staff we're going to get rid of all the B team players and we're just going to use the under 19s uh, obviously we do have a few in and around the first team squad as it is um, but I'm wondering if we've got any that can play a part now You'll remember from the last video, if you got to, to the youth intake section, we do have Miguel Jimenez who can play as a ball winner. Um, he could potentially step up to the first team level to an extent to allow Indorum or Maria to play in, in that sort of higher midfield role. We could, we could try and bring Hugo Uranga through into the first team very, very early. He's very raw, uh, but does play central midfield attack, does play Mandala, does play advanced playmaker. Um, that is one option. He is very young, though. He's very young. I've just been looking. We do also have the guys like we've got like Bartolome or Ryman. Uh, we do also have Mario More, who again can sort of play across the front line um, I'm really really tempted to bring Uranga in as that sort of that rotation that backup option again it, it, his mental attributes that are low obviously his leadership positioning they will get better just purely through playing more um, I think he's just a fantastic little player I really do I think he'll develop a lot he can bulk out a bit more what have we got in training as? A Metzala on support. Maybe two Metzalas, maybe Jota and, and Uranga. Um, we're going to bring him to the senior squad. We're going to see how he gets on in pre-season. Maybe stick him in a mentoring group, uh, although he is, you know, realist. Uh, good determination, good aggression. Uh, yeah, I, I think, he, I really do think, I really do think he's got something about him. Just looking at him, I mean, that decision making at 11, at the, I mean, he's just turned 16. He was obviously 15 in the video that, are, that, that I uploaded yesterday. Um, technically, he's decent enough. Physically, probably needs to improve a bit more, but he is only 16. So, hmm. They want us to, to improve his final third, which is composure and his decisions. I don't think he needs that, to be completely honest with you. What I might do is if I do his passing which is here somewhere <laughs> there it is to improve his, his vision his technique and his passing I think if we can get that quite high we've got a good little player there and that brings me on to my next topic which I was I was umming and ahhing about in the last video when we did notice that we have Danny Lorenzo um, coming through as well you'll notice here that Ivan Ramos actually did get a couple of goals and um, he started a full match for us and he played very, very well. He scored both goals in a 3-2 victory. Um, he's got a few more player traits. He does come deep to get the ball. We, we don't necessarily dislike that, but it's not really how we're looking to play with the counter-attack. Uh, although we have played counter-attack with the target man, that has worked. Um, what do we do in terms of like the third-choice striker? Um, do we... Do we use Ramos? Do we use Danny Lorenzo? Do we use them in rotation of each other? Um, what I had done towards the back end of last season, I'd set them both to only 45 minutes of action for the under-19s. So they literally replaced each other just to keep them fresh enough that I can then use them for a 45 minutes in the first team if need be. Um, I do really like Lorenzo, but he didn't 
passed the eyes test when he was on the pitch. Um, compared to Ivan Ramos, his average rating was a 6.47. Danny Lorenzo, Ivan Ramos got a nice average rating of a 6.72, which leads me to believe that uh, Ivan Ramos is probably the better one. Problem is, he is quite injury prone. So if we look at his medical report, um, there's no increased injury, there's nothing noticeable, but this knee and thigh have given him a bit of grief. Um, Sylvia Ortega is our new head of sports science and um, she's fantastic, absolutely fantastic, came in from at both the Aspire Academy and Barcelona. Um, a bit annoyed that she doesn't have Qatar then as like the Aspire thing, but it, you know, is what it is. Um, I do like him. I, I like I like everything about Ivan Ramos. Again, other than the fact that like he comes deep to get the ball, but I, I may keep the forty-five minute option for another season and then look to move them on maybe after that. I think just going into the season so far with what we've got, this is probably what we would line up with um, for the first game of the season, depending on more incomings. Uh, again, the only other option is if we bring a Ranga in to play alongside Jota and then again pick the roles and duties. They may do Matzala, they may keep a centre midfield attack. They've got Matzala. He's very creative for his age, um, great decision making as well. So, a nice committed young player to play alongside Jota who is just getting better all the time <laughs> um, yeah yeah long removed from the days where we're playing saves with a lot of money <laughs> um, there's a lot of players wanted the Frutos is another one who is wanted and has got quite a high valuation uh, Alvaro Garcia is under a £6 million transfer offer from Lens. I love Garcia, he's fantastic, but he's 31 and it's six million pounds for a 31 year old when we're in such tight financial restrictions. It makes sense. If he was to go out, obviously we do have De Frutos, we have Asano, uh, we do have Damari Gray who can play out there as well. Um, we do also have the option again of the young players, uh, Danny Lorenzo can play out wide. We do also have, who played a few games towards the back end of last season, Carlos Galindo, um, left hand side as a winger. We, there, there's options um, I didn't really want to bed the youngsters in all so early but it looks like we're going to have to we don't really have the financial power or the back end to, to move on from there um, but yeah I'm going to leave that one there um, just sort of like your basic episode that's the state of the club that's the state we're in uh, a little bit of editing a little bit of the video magic a nice new border which I'm trapped in yeah we're a little bit weaker I'm not going to lie we're a little bit weaker but I feel like we can we can get better once people are out the door so you will see that in the next episode um, but for now thank you very very much for watching uh, we're looking at coming back for the first game of the season in the next episode when that is I'm not sure who we're playing I'm not sure because it hasn't been announced yet um, but thank you very much for watching thank you very much once again for all of the, the support that you've been giving me so far and uh, I will see you all again very very soon